I'm sat in a room off camera with two experts in their fields. An expert on nicotine, and I don't care whether you say you're not, you are. And an expert on e in all of their formats. And there are two questions that I keep being asked re relatively recently that I would like to answer. We'll come to you first, yeah. Dr. Farsalinos. Titanium as a coil. There are rumors floating around that it's either the best thing since sliced bread or the worst thing since Simon Chapman. Which is it? <laughs> I think none of this is true. Titanium is uh, one of the most inert materials. It is used in medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem, the problem, I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm not sure if there's a problem. The thing is that we're not uh, afraid of titanium itself. What we fear about is titanium dioxide, mm -hmm. which is a probable carcinogen, and there is a lot of dispute about that. There are other studies who have shown that there is nothing wrong with it. Anyway, the WHO and the uh, IARC ha has characterized titanium dioxide as a probable carcinogen. But as you know, it's not a matter of the presence of a material, but of the amount. So, if titanium dioxide, it, first of all, titanium dioxide will be formed as a layer outside of the coil. So if it is emitted to the aerosol, and if it is emitted at high enough levels, it might be a problem. Now, what's the possibility of this happening? Very, very low, I think. We haven't done any measurements, so we must first check if it is emitted, and even if it is, at what levels? Mm. Based on the previous studies, we are seeing, I mean, so minute levels of uh, of um, heavy metals and other kind type of metals emitted to the aerosol that as you saw in our latest uh, review they don't pose any real health concern so i i don't know if uh, i'm not sure if they will see something different with titanium because still you're using a very small amount of coil and still you know you vape for a few days with the same coil the coil doesn't disappear i mean it stays there means that the levels of emissions, if there are any, are very, very low. We were talking about nanograms. And uh, unless we test them, we cannot say for sure. But as I said lately in my blog, uh, any problem with metal seems to be of very, very minor importance. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to test and we are, we are now performing a protocol on testing metals. Um, we are going to include the use of several type of coils using the same atomizer in order to see what's the contribution of the coil at the end to the metals that we find in the aerosol. I suspect it's going to be very, very small, but it is a possibility because we have to explain to the vapors that the coil is not just sitting there in the air, it is in contact with the liquid and the liquid has some corrosive properties. So. It is justifiable that we are seeing metals in the, in, the, in the aerosol. We just want to see what's the contribution from different parts. I mean, even the e-liquids contain metals because, for example, water contains metals and the liquids contain water. So we must find out what's the source of metal exposure from the aerosol from different sources, from the uh, walls of the atomizer, from the coil, from anywhere else, from the wicking material, from where. So until then, I cannot say for sure, but based on the studies which have been done in old generation devices, which are old, there is no reason of concern so with no, the metals they found. We have no need really. But we don't have data and we are not ready to say that yes, titanium is the best or no, titanium is the worst. But, okay. but you, you yourself have made this risk analysis based on the published data yeah. and you showed that it's yeah. not of any concern. It's not that's, what, that's what so I'm repeating. If the, if the metals in the in the in the vape are not relevant, why is it? In, why do you want to know the source of these irrelevant metals? That's that's what why. My uh, because uh, I don't find it a bad idea to reduce some exposures that can be reduced. I mean, you know, zero risk is nowhere. Okay. Yes. We said it's not of significant health concern. Doesn't mean it's zero, but it means it's extremely, extremely low. So maybe if we can avoid something by, for example, if we can, we, we may find that titanium may be better than nickel. Why not, you know, yeah. guide the industry to use titanium, they will all do it. It's not, you know, a secret. There's just different alpha value. It's very easy to change, you know, the formulation. And instead of um, uh, controlling the temperature with nickel, you can control it with titanium. It's very easy. 
So maybe we can provide some guidance, but I think I have a feeling that any difference is going to be minor. It's not even worth uh, of, uh, of uh, you know doing something. Yeah, but you have to communicate this to the to the yes. to the public. Yes, yes. Well, the yes. rapers you know, get frightened. They when you when you you are sort of well respected uh, advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you say, oh, don't don't drive don't the use coin. nickel, use the titanium, <laughs> then you're gonna wipe out. You're gonna ruin. You ruin the nickel market, you know? Yeah, that's why I'm not saying yeah, so, anything. So <laughs> have, I don't want to create a problem with the worldwide to... nickel <laughs> trade. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm right in thinking that well, what, what we're talking about is nuanced. We're talking very small values. Yeah. We're talking very low risk. Let's not forget that we don't have any studies on new generation atomizers. I mean, the studies that have been published from Williams and another from Gonevich, we were already talking about cartomizers. Mm -hmm. And Williams bought the cartomizer two years before she did the study. I mean, we, we don't have evidence at all. I'm sure, and I mentioned today, that the evolution is not all only towards more effective products, but also towards safer products. Yes. Med plastics have basically been eliminated from the atomizers. That's a step, a big step forward making them even more safer although still the previous versions were quite safe i mean they, there was no real uh, worry about the harms but it's a big step forward to go to pyrex glass to go to stainless steel so right two as i say leading experts two men that i respect probably more than most others what you're saying to me if i can paraphrase it is the previous generations of e-sigs were safe enough and what we're using now is even safer. Is that accurate? That's my feeling and my impression from what I see and from the information we get from the manufacturing and the materials that they use. And we're going to prove that sooner or later. Great. Now, Bernd, your specialist subject, if you like. <laughs> As I see it. Look, everybody thinks, everybody knows your take on nicotine as a, as a poison is probably one of the most accurate worldwide. Do you see a problem with nicotine as a poison? What we're hearing with all of this stuff calls to the various different poison centres. These are just asking questions. How would you speak to someone brand new to vaping about the challenges of using nicotine in an ASIC? Does it pose a challenge? There's no chance at all to poison yourself with, with the commercially available liquids up to this well, I think the highest concentrations of the base that you that are commercially available is 70 milligrams per ml or something, yeah. yeah and so even with that there's no chance when you get it on the skin or you, I mean when you drink it liter wise uh -huh. yeah, you, you're gonna be in a bad condition you're gonna vomit yeah you pro probably will be hospitalized but drink liter wise of a toilet cleaner it will be the same. Huh? I mean, I think I know without, which I'd rather do, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of products out there that are potentially toxic upon misuse. But as long as you use it according to specification, just for vaping, or you put something on your skin, nothing can happen. I mean, I would pr protect kids from that because it's a matter of, of, of body weight. Yes. So if you have a two year old toddler, it's, it's more endangered than Constantinos. <laughs> 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 you should have pointed at me, but never mind. <laughs> so, what, so what, what we're saying basically is that nobody needs to worry if they get a little bit of e-juice on Not at skin. all, not at all. I think the danger is, is, is when you are frightened from that, when you worry about that, you make real mistakes. Yeah? Yes. So when I started to work with pure nicotine, I, I was the opinion, I told everybody one drop of pure nicotine on the skin is going to kill you until I realized, first of all, resorption is pretty slow, and secondly, this 50 milligram dose is, is rubbish. Yeah? Yeah. So I bought these super saver gloves, you know, just to protect myself. And what happened, you know, I lost one bottle of nicotine because I was so clumsy. I was, yeah, clumsy. I was just, yeah, it's clumsy. really difficult to work I, with I, that. I absolutely yeah. agree. We must know, of course, and I agree absolutely that children should be should stay away from the products. And I also agree with the implementation of child-proof caps, uh, child resistance. They are called. They are not even called proof child resistance. But otherwise, from intended use, so vaping it, it's impossible to get not even an overdose. The overdose that you may get 
from vaping too much is going to be some nausea and that's it mm. yeah that's so like smoking, nothing yeah. yeah just like when you smoke too much yeah. one day that you go out with a lot of alcohol <laughs> nothing happens you get a little bit of nausea because the absorption is happening at a slow rate even from the inhalation you know there is a limit on how much you can inhale there are studies on this actually with smokers that and even vapors yeah that they unconsciously limit or adjust the plasma levels of nicotine. Yeah. Yeah. There was a study, I think, they could vape as much as they want with their own devices, and then they measured the plasma levels, and they all had about the same plasma levels, without knowing what they are doing. They're just, you, you limit yourself, I think. Yes. What, and this, this poses a question, at a number of different events I've been at, the latest one being Vape Jam, which was, I know neither of you were there. But it was like walking through a disco where the haze machine had been switched on for a fortnight. <laughs> the, it, was, it was dense, the haze was really dense. And one or two people were saying, oh, I'm over-nicked, I'm over-nicked. What do you make of that? I mean, this was just haze in the air. How much of the nicotine do we actually keep in us when we vape, or, or doesn't it matter? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you're talking about overexposure to, to the level that it's uh, beyond the saturation limits in the atmosphere, and that's a problem, not for nicotine, but it can create some form of a discomfort to some people, because don't forget that some people, for example, are sensitive to propylene glycol. Well, you can have, it can I be don't think it's going to be due to the nicotine, but okay. propylene glycol, for example, creates a lot of uh, irritation. Some people develop cough due to it, especially when they are for the first time exposed. And I've seen in some vape shops or in some meetings like this that the atmosphere is, is horrible. I mean, there is no, there is no, there must be a limit. I mean, yeah, that's that's the problem. I mean, I'm I'm really defending the freedom of vaping at all pla at places where where smoking is not allowed. But then you have this hardcore. We have seen this video. Yeah, would well, you you showed the video? Yeah, 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 this hardcore yeah. lung inhalation guy. I mean, when somebody's sitting in a restaurant and starting, starts Doing vaping that. like this, I mean, it's very clear that you won't allow it. But there are other, other behaviors that are not socially accepted. Exactly. It exactly. doesn't justify to ban that. That's why I've, I, I'm trying to, to, to advise the people who are uh, uploading videos on YouTube, you know, don't do it on YouTube because all the regulators, no, no regulator is going to accept it. Everyone is watching. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. They are paid to do that. The University of Arizona got about two million just to observe what's happening on Facebook, Twitter, and social media, e-cigarette forums, and the YouTube. And it's a behavior which, uh, I mean, you can decide for yourself and you can do whatever you want. I don't, mi I'm, I don't mind doing that for yourself. It's up to you, but the regulators who don't have such liberal, let's say, thoughts and believe that they have to control you, when they see this, it is provocative for them. And it's creating problems not for them, for the e-cigarette in general. They don't care if this is a small part of the vaping community or that a smoker who is used to mouth-to-lung inhalation is never going to start the e-cigarette directly from that. Maybe eventually he may he may become a direct lung inhalator, but not initially because he's not used. Can you do this? I I, I don't even... I can do this if I use I a very low... You can do it easily if you use a very low I nicotine never concentration. Learned, I never learned to directly inhale in the lung. I, I, I'm, so, I'm a smoker and I... It's you easy, don't you don't need like to this. learn it, but uh, <laughs> I prefer there's, there's to do it conventionally. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. marijuana yeah. and bomb. No, I yeah. never used a bomb. Yeah. 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 But what I need to uh, give some uh, some ideas and some thoughts, provoke some thinking to the vapors, is that uh, what you we said about nicotine. I think it's a little bit more dangerous. I'm not saying that it's a disaster again, because when I say it's dangerous, everyone thinks that, oh, it's worse than smoking. So I have to clarify it every time. <laughs> Same happened with the dry burning of coils. Everyone right. thought, oh, that's a disaster. What, no, what I will I do just, the next I day? I just complained about your metal molecules. Because yeah, I'm, yeah, it's I'm okay. It's, I know, there I know, are no, no, no metal no, 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 molecules. I know, I know, I know. It's, there are no metal molecules. I said molecules. about molecular structure. Yeah, and and somebody's not, talking about structure. metal molecules, and it's, this person is a cardiologist. Then I say, okay, the cardiologists should not step 
into meta, metal, into metal chemistry. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, not, it's not a molecular metal chemistry structure. Metal chemistry shouldn't, but... shouldn't talk about hard yeah, yeah. And, you know. <laughs> It's ions with metal bonds anyway. Um, the problem, I think, in terms of nicotine is coming from the an obsession that we see of, of vapors trying to reduce the nicotine levels in the liquid. That's something I've yeah, never heard. And it's something and they history. don't observe. They, 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 they don't see that when they are doing this, they are uh, automatically and unconsciously elevating their nicotine yeah, consumption. Course. It's like low nicotine cigarettes. Sorry, their liquid the consumption. Sorry. It's the same. Yes. It's the same like the so, low nicotine cigarettes. Uh, yes. Because in my opinion, you're not going to develop any harm from inhaling nicotine from the e-cigarette. And any harm potential, the, that residual 5% that we're talking about, which may be 1%, is going to come from other components of the liquid and not from nicotine. Mm -hmm. uh, I would advise someone, if he can choose between the two, to, it's better to use higher nicotine concentration and reduce the amount of liquid consumption per day, rather than, you know, have an obsession of going as slow as possible and whenever he reduces the nicotine concentration, he elevates consumption because at the end he's getting the same exact nicotine on a daily basis. He just needs much more liquid to get the same amount of nicotine. I don't like to say it, but I agree. <laughs> and it's the same story. It's the same story that's happening with direct lung inhalation. So I can tell you that I did an experiment. I tried to measure from aldehydes from from uh, dripping. 40 watts yeah. uh, direct lung inhalation, we're talking about more than uh, one liter of puff volume. We failed to do that because we couldn't find a way to isolate that amount of vapor and impregnate the mm -hmm. DNPH solution with that amount of, 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 of aerosol. But we are going to eventually succeed, I'm sure we have to change <laughs> the methodology. But I had the chance that I measure the temperatures. And you know that I used this device at 12, 15 watts, at 15 watts, yeah, I use this, at 15 okay. watts, normal vaping with this air hole, as you know, 60 to 70 milliliters of volume, and then I turned it around, Mr. Watts, how, how 15, many? 15, 15, and then I used with the open air flow, fully open air flow, direct lung, 1000 milliliters per puff, uh, puff volume, for, uh, 35 watts. 35 watts. The temperature of evaporation was exactly the same. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. The yeah, maximum yeah. temperature was about 300, 310 mm -hmm. degrees, yeah. but it was exactly the same. So there is no additional temperature. Why? Because the airflow is okay. increased by so much from 70 milliliters to 1000 milliliters it that more. it cools quite a lot and it also enhances the aerosol production, which also absorbs energy. So even if there is no increased thermal degradation of the liquid in direct line inhalation, what these people are doing is that they were vaping 12 or 15 or 16 milligrams or 18 per, per milliliter of nicotine. And you know that it's very, very irritating to do direct line with that level. So everyone is using less than six, maybe three, even zero. But going from 18 or 16 or 12 to six or to, to three milligrams per milliliter means that they are Tripling, tri tripling or quadrupling their consumption, the liquid consumption. And that's my concern, because any residual risk that and any exposure for to some toxins, th those low levels, is going to be three times or four times higher to that, to that person. Mm. And this is something that everyone should think and think about it and then decide what he will do. I'm not saying don't do it. It's a personal decision and all these people are adults. I'm just giving them something to think about and then to decide for themselves based on an informed decision. And it's, it's cheaper. It's going to be cheaper, yes. It's cheaper. And you don't need so much liquid. Yeah. Mm. I'm not saying that otherwise. I can say that based on the temperature measurement that I, I will eventually replicate, uh, I will eventually verify the results with aldehyde measurements. We just need to develop a new lab, basically. Completely change the way that we, we, we isolate aerosol. It's very difficult. Uh, but based on the temperature, I'm, I'm pretty confident that any uh, elevated levels of aldehydes that we're going to find per puff is just because in a single puff at those power levels, you consume much more liquid. Mm -hmm. So the thermal degradation rate is not going to increase, 
but it's going to be, you know, aldehydes are relevant to how much liquid you consume. So if in one puff you consume three times more than in another puff, you may have three times more formaldehyde, but the, in reality, the levels are the same, um, unless you consume more. But still not, not to worry about, though. No. According to the findings until now, it's nothing to worry about. Excellent. I suppose no one is vaping at dry puff conditions because yes. some people told me I like the burning taste of the dry puff. I don't know. So the, you're the only one that I see that likes the dry puff. And even then, there are ex smokers and then they have this formaldehyde comparable in amounts comparable to, to cigarettes. Yeah, but yeah. still, they are missing, they are missing the carbon monoxide. They are missing yeah, the yeah. tar. So we are talking about ex smokers. We should never ever forget that we are talking about ex smokers and not not about people used to walk in the, the Austrian Yeah, Alps. the thing is that what I have observed is that at, after a few months, good. If, yeah, after a few clean, months yeah. of use, um, uh, of, of switching, <laughs> you know, waiting there. <laughs> Sorry. after a few months of switching from tobacco to e-cigarettes, we are seeing that vapors become suddenly very health conscious, although they yeah. didn't care at all much when more, they were yeah, smokers, yeah. they become so much health conscious that Whenever you're telling something and you are explaining that the risk is small, but it may be there, there is a huge overreaction. Oh, what we will do? What's going to happen next? What am I going yeah. to do tomorrow? I mean, well, when they were smoking, you know, they were in denial, basically. They didn't care because they knew they were doing harm to themselves. They knew they couldn't stop, so they better not think about it. Now with vaping, they become so health conscious that whenever they hear something about a risk, they are getting crazy. I mean, I receive crazy emails every time a cell study comes out. I repeatedly tell them, don't look at cell studies. Cells don't develop emphysema. The cells don't develop myocardial infarctions. I mean, it doesn't happen. And it's not one mechanism, a reduction in some proteins that leads to emphysema. There are so many complex mechanisms over so many years yeah, leading to emphysema. Yeah, these this cell studies are cheaper, easy to do, yes, this is routine, fast. they have it already established. Yeah. An inhalation study with a, with a rat, I mean, this is really expensive, this is a lot of work, they don't do it. But with the cell culture, you know, it measures some... That's why I'm telling the papers, don't look at the cell studies, no one, I mean, in, in cell studies, we, uh, we, we are finding 20 to 30 miraculous anti-cancer drugs every year, nothing works in humans. Mm -hmm. You see how many miraculous discoveries we have done through cell studies and nothing worked in reality. Doesn't make sense. So don't look at cell studies. There are three they mean different nothing. processes of cell test. Yeah, this is necrosis, this is apoptosis, apoptosis, this is autophagy. Yeah, And for each of these processes, there are again about 10 parameters each yeah, that you can measure. And whatever you measure, you get different outcomes. And then you have different cell types. Yeah, So, I mean... I'll give you a characteristic example. Many In many cell studies evaluating lung epithelium, they are using adenocarcinoma lung epithelium, cancer lung cells. The reason is that the cultures are more stable and the, the results of the studies, if you do repetitions, are more consistent. Because the cells are more um, less prone to damage from the environment, from any kind of stress. Now, imagine what happens if you expose cancer lung cells to tobacco cigarette. They die. They die. All the cells die. At 100% extract, you have almost 100% death. Does this mean that you know, to understand how irrelevant they are to, to real to, to human exposure? If you if you consider this as being relevant to humans, you will say that okay, I must smoke in order to kill yeah, my cancer, that's, which that's is true. not which is not what is happening. But we have done a study on cells on uh, on, on on lung carcinoma cells, and they die from the cigarette, from the tobacco cigarette. We're going to have to be very very careful when this goes out. Otherwise, everybody that's got <laughs> even a trace of lung cancer is going to start smoking again. Yeah, you have to smoke, and because there's no effect, no effect of the of the liquid. It's just a tobacco. this yeah, anti tumor yeah. effect. So imagine, you have to smoke. I mean, imagine they're going to say that e-cigarette promotes yeah, lung yeah, cancer yeah, yeah. because <laughs> cells don't die. 